Welcome back everyone, Wes from Carl Wesley Sewing Patterns here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to sew a men's turtleneck. If you haven't done so already, you can purchase this pattern as a PDF download from my Etsy shop using a link in the description below. The pattern is designed to fit close to the body and ranges from size extra small to 2XL. The recommended fabric is lightweight four-way stretch knit fabric that has at least 50% stretch and good recovery. If you need help learning how to assemble and use PDF sewing patterns, please refer to my other video tutorial, which I will link in the description below. All right, let's get started. Once you've printed out, assembled, and cut the pattern pieces for your size, these are the pattern pieces that you will have. One collar piece, one sleeve, one back piece, and one front piece. Please note the long arrowed lines on the pattern pieces. These indicate the greatest stretch of the fabric. Also, please note that the front and back pieces are cut on the fold of the fabric and the fold line is indicated here. Finally, please make a special note of all the small tick marks you will find along the edges of the pattern pieces. These indicate notches and should be snipped through all layers of fabric, and these will serve as guides to use in matching things during the sewing. Now let's talk about fabric and cutting. This pattern is only suitable for four-way stretch knits with a spandex fiber content. Some examples of suitable fabrics are cotton jersey, ITY knit, or brushed jersey knit. Because this turtleneck fits close to the body, I don't suggest using any knit fabric that has less than 50% stretch. The stretch is very important to be able to pull the turtleneck over your head and to be able to wear it comfortably. I estimate that about two yards of 60 inch wide fabric should be enough to complete any of the sizes. The fabric I'm using is a polyester spandex brushed jersey knit purchased from Fabric Wholesale Direct. This fabric is one of my favorite knits because it's lightweight, very soft on the skin, and it only costs about $6 a yard. I'll put a link in the description below so you can easily find this fabric for yourself. I have my fabric laid out so that there are two folds and the selvage edges of the fabric meet in the middle. Both the front and back pattern pieces are placed on the folds of the fabric because these will be opened up into full size pieces after cutting. When cutting stretchy knit fabrics, I suggest using a small rotary cutter and weights. On the back piece, use your scissors to make tiny snips in the notches at the neckline as well as the armhole. The sleeve is cut through two layers of fabric, but not on the fold.
there are three notches to snip on the top of your sleeve. On the front piece, make sure to clip the notch on the armhole just as you did the back piece. Also, place a tiny clip at the neckline directly on the fold to indicate the center front of the turtleneck. We still need to cut the collar piece, and that can be cut from a remaining section of fabric. The collar is cut on only one layer of fabric, unlike the other pieces. There are two notches to clip with your scissors on the collar. After cutting, these are the pieces you should have. One collar. One front one back, and two sleeves. That will be five pieces in total. Now that we have everything cut out, let's talk about the sewing. For this pattern, all the seams are stitched at a 3 8 inch or 1 centimeter seam allowance which is the standard seam allowance for serged seams. In this tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to assemble the turtleneck using a serger, but it is possible to assemble the garment with only a standard sewing machine. There are a number of other videos and resources online that will show you how to sew stretchy fabrics using only a standard sewing machine, so I won't go into that here. The hem allowances for this pattern are one inch or two and a half centimeters. We will first stitch the shoulder seams. One optional but highly suggested step is to stabilize the shoulder seams before serging. An easy way to stabilize the shoulders is to use fusible knit seam tape. I'm going to trim the seam tape down to about three quarters of an inch wide and then press with steam to fuse it to the shoulder seam edges on the wrong side of the fabric. Side note here, the fabric I'm using in this tutorial is very difficult to see the right and the wrong sides on video, so before I did any sewing, I did mark the wrong sides of each of my pattern pieces with Taylor's chalk. We want to fuse the seam tape to the wrong side of our pattern pieces so that it's hidden inside the turtleneck when we finish sewing.
Since I'm using a synthetic jersey and I don't want to damage the fabric with the heat of the iron, I'm going to use a press cloth on top of the fusible seam tape. I find that using lots of steam works well to fuse the seam tape to the fabric. Apply the seam tape to the shoulders of both the front and back pieces of the turtleneck. Stabilizing the shoulder seams will prevent any waviness or distortion when we go to the serger, and it will also help maintain the shape of the garment during washing and wearing. Before sewing directly on your pattern pieces, I suggest doing a test sew on scraps of fabric. We want to check that the stitches are balanced and that they stretch well with the fabric. I will be using contrasting thread in my serger so that it is easier to see on video. However, if I was making something normally, I would use thread that matches my fabric. Place the front piece on the back piece, right sides facing, with the edges of the shoulders matching. Now, let's head to the serger to stitch the shoulder seams at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. As a reminder, all the seams on this turtleneck will be stitched at a 3 8 inch or 1 centimeter seam allowance. Now that we've finished the shoulder seams, let's move on to the turtleneck collar. You can now turn the body of the turtleneck right side out. Now we want to fold the rectangle of the collar right sides facing, and stitch the non-notched edges together. Stitching these edges together will create a tube that will form the collar. Reminder, we are stitching together the edges that do not have notches in this step.
Now, roll the tube you just created so that the wrong sides of the fabric are facing and so that the remaining raw edges match. This step will enclose the serging so that it isn't visible. The seam line on the tube of your collar will indicate the center back of the collar, and the notched edge on the opposite side will indicate the center front. Before we attach the collar, we need to mark quarter points on the collar and on the neckline of the turtleneck body. To find the remaining quarter points on the neckline, match the center front and center back notches and walk the edges of the neckline together so that you get a fold on the left and right hand sides. Where the folds are, use your scissors and place a tiny clip into the fabric. These notches will end up about one inch or so below the shoulder seam lines. And now we have four quarter points around the neckline that are equidistant from each other. Now to do the same thing on the raw edges of the collar, all we need to do is match the center front notch to the seam line in the collar, lay the collar flat, and clip the folds on the left and right hand sides. Making all these quarter points is important because it will help us distribute the stretch of the collar equally as we attach it to the neck opening. The collar is actually slightly smaller than the edge that we will attach it to. Next, reach inside the tube of the collar so that you can pull up the raw edge of the turtleneck body into the collar. We will be matching all three remaining raw edges with the seam in the collar being at the center back of the turtleneck. The body of the turtleneck is going to end up bunched up inside the collar, and that's okay. I like to go around and match each of the four notches with a sewing clip. Next, let's head to the serger and attach the collar in the round. Important step here. We need to turn the stitch length down on our serger before we attach the collar. The standard stitch length on my serger is a 3, and I'm going to turn it down to a 2 or a little bit lower. The reason here is that we want the stitches around the neckline to be extra dense to allow that seam to stretch a lot. If this seam doesn't have a lot of stretch, it will be very difficult or impossible to pull the turtleneck over your head. You only need to turn the stitch length down for this one particular seam. This seam is really tight so you will want to use only the free arm of the serger. To get started attaching the collar in the round, serge onto the fabric somewhere near the center back. This step is the trickiest part of the whole sewing pattern, so take your time here and work extra carefully. While stitching this seam, you will need to stretch the collar slightly to match the quarter points around the neck opening but you don't need to apply any additional stretch to the neck opening of the turtleneck body. As you stitch slowly around the opening, 
check often to make sure that all three raw edges are matched. Remove the sewing clips as they approach the presser foot. As you come all the way back around to the center back, overlap your starting stitches about one inch or so, and then serge off the fabric. Now we can turn the collar right side out. If you get a little bit of rippling or distortion after you do the seam, don't despair too much because it's a pretty tricky seam to do. A good press with a lot of steam should do the trick to smooth out any slight imperfections. With the collar attached, the rest of this sewing project really is pretty easy. Now, let's attach the sleeves. First, open up the turtleneck so that we can see the entire arch of the armhole from underarm point to underarm point. Flip the sleeve onto the turtleneck armhole so that right sides of the fabric are facing. I'm going to match the sleeve cap to the armhole at five points using sewing clips. The first point is the underarm point. Then a few inches further along the curve, we will match the first notch. The next point we will match is the notch at the top center of the sleeve cap which we will match with the shoulder seam line. The fourth point is the notch on the opposite side of the armhole. And finally, we will match the fifth point, which is the underarm point at the opposite side of the armhole. You will need to walk the sleeve cap edges around the armhole to match these points. Now that we have these five points matched, let's head to the serger. There are quite a few different tricks that people use to stitch in sleeves, and I encourage you to research those on your own. My preference is to stitch the sleeve cap in with the sleeve cap facing the feed dogs and the armhole on top. With my left hand underneath the turtleneck body but on top of the sleeve, I can use my fingers to 
pull in the sleeve cap so that it matches to the armhole as the layers go under the presser foot. At some points, you may see the bottom layer of fabric, which is the sleeve cap, ripple up just a little bit, and that's because I'm drawing it in with my fingers to match the armhole. Take care to match all five of the points that we marked with clips as you are stitching this seam. As a side note, the front and back of the sleeve and the armhole are identical, so it's not possible to accidentally sew the sleeve in backwards. If you are newer to sewing clothing, and this process seems kind of confusing, search online for a flat sleeve insertion, and that should help clear things up some. As a newer sewer, you'd probably think that most sleeves are sewn into the armhole in the round, but actually the opposite is true. Most of the time, sleeves can be inserted using the flat method, where the side seam and underarm seam are sewn up last. Repeat the process for the second sleeve before you move on to the next step. Now, Let's move on to the side seam and underarm seam. Now, with the sleeves sewn in, lay out your turtleneck flat with the right side of the fabric facing up and the sleeves laying out to the left and the right sides. Fold the turtleneck in half to match the hems of the front and backs of the turtleneck with the right sides of the fabric facing. You will then have a T-shape with the underarm and side seams matched. The underarm seam and side seam will be stitched in one continuous seam. I prefer to sew each side seam starting at the wrist and stitching to the hem, but it doesn't really matter if you start with the hem instead. Since the side seams are big long seams, it's a good idea to use a few sewing clips to make sure the edges are matched perfectly. And I like to start by matching the underarm seams first. With our sewing clips in place, let's head to the serger and sew up the remaining side seams. When you serge long seams like this, try to keep the weight of the garment up on the sewing table and make sure that there isn't any stretch being applied to the fabric as it runs through the machine. To make sure you get a perfect match at the intersection of the underarm seams, turn the seam allowances in opposite directions so you can butt the seams up against each other.
Repeat this step the same for the other side seam of the turtleneck before you move on to the next step. We are almost finished with our turtleneck. The final step is hemming. The hem allowance for this pattern is one inch or two and a half centimeters. Since the hems on this pattern are straight, the hemming is pretty easy to do. What I like to do is use a drafting or quilting ruler and mark a chalk line on the wrong side of the fabric, two inches up from the raw edge. This is a line where you will fold up the raw edge to meet. But wait a second, I already said the hem allowance was one inch for this pattern, so why am I marking a chalk mark two inches up? A one inch hem allowance means there is one inch of fabric on each side of the fold line. That's how I came to two inches. Place chalk marks two inches up from the raw edge on the fronts and backs of both sleeves and on the front and back of the turtleneck. Once you have all the chalk lines marked, then head to your sewing machine. I generally don't use pins or sewing clips for these kind of single fold knit hems, but you definitely can if you think that makes it easier. My go-to stitch for stretchy knit hems is this three-step zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. However, if you have a cover stitch machine, that's probably a better option, but there are a whole lot of different ways you can do stretch knit hems, so feel free to choose the method that works best for you. Just make sure to test a hem on a scrap piece of fabric to make sure it looks nice and stretches well. Using a three-step zigzag stitch, like the one I am, it's super easy to hem the turtleneck from the inside. All you need to do is fold up the raw edge to meet the chalk line that you made and stitch close to the raw edge. I prefer to start my stitches in the round at one of the side seams. If your machine has some trouble stitching over the bulk, of the side seam, all you need to do is place a folded up index card or something similar underneath the presser foot and behind the needle, and this will level out the foot so that the fabric will feed over the bulk. You may notice that I have the even feed mechanism engaged on my machine. This isn't really a requirement, it's just what I thought worked best when I did a practice sample of my hem on this fabric. When I reached the side seam on the opposite side of the hem, I did need to use a folded up index card again to level out the foot to get over the bulk of the seam. Continue stitching all the way around the hem and overlap your starting stitches by a small amount. The sleeve hems are done the same way, except the wrist opening is really tight, so you're going to need to use the free arm of your sewing machine. Since the wrist opening fits snugly on the free arm of my sewing machine, I do have to manually help feed the fabric under the presser foot. Start and stop your stitches at the underarm seam line so that they are hidden out of view when you wear the turtleneck.
Repeat the same way for both sleeve hems before moving to the next step. Last but not least, the final step is to turn your turtleneck right side out and press all the hems with steam to make the edges nice and flat. This concludes the men's turtleneck sewing tutorial from Carl Wesley Sewing Patterns. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will have fun sewing and wearing all your new turtlenecks. If you run into any problems or have any additional questions, please drop me a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. A like and a subscribe are always appreciated. Also, stay tuned for my next videos because I will be releasing even more patterns sometime soon. That's all from me. Happy sewing, and see you in the next video.